inheritance. What's the first thing you think of when you hear the word inheritance? Money? A house? Jewelry? Maybe a family business? Or maybe grandma's glass unicorn collection? <laughs> or Uncle Winston's favorite recliner? Or maybe it's a particular trait or mannerism or a way that we interact with particular people, places, or things. The fact is that we inherit all types of stuff. Some are just more obvious than others. So when I inherited a sand quarry, <laughs> my first thought was, this quarry is one of the few sources of silica sand on the island, which is used and is a main ingredient for the construction industry. And how blessed am I to be able to assist in the continued business that my father started. <laughs> Immediately followed by this eco-warrior inner voice yelling, but wait, <laughs> you're an ecologist. I've spent the majority of my life actively stewarding projects and investing in projects um, and practices that, direct, that, are direct, that are directly responsible for increasing people's livelihood and lives. And now I might be directly responsible for destroying natural habitats. Now, I didn't make the choice to open a sand quarry but I do feel a deep sense of responsibility to both the business and the needs of Barbados and, at the same time, to steward the quarry back to ecological health through regeneration. So it was at that very moment that I realized what the opportunity is and not what the burden was. We can choose how we interact with our inheritance, taking actions that evolve beyond the obvious story. It's kind of like inheriting Uncle Winston's recliner. It's, you know, it's, it's got history, it's got great sentimental value, but given the choice, you wouldn't necessarily go out and purchase that same recliner and put it in your house and live with it day after day. So living in the possibility and not living in the same old story, it became clear to me that what we choose to do with our inheritance is really what makes the difference. Most often, we don't choose the things that we inherit, and many times, we're not sure what to do with them when we receive them, or maybe when we rec uh, recognize a particular trait. Once we've inherited something, it doesn't mean that we must hold on to it or have buy-in to it, its current status or structure, but that's what we often do. We carry the same story forward, holding on to it as if it were grandma's unicorn collection, right? Feeling obligated to serve it in the exact way that she gave it to us. So instead of carrying that story forward, I wanted to carry a different story forward. So a story that was filled with possibilities and not limiting beliefs. First off, I can tell you all that I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> How do you regenerate 300 acres of land that's been quarried over the last 50 years? Well, about six years ago, I decided to go out and educate myself on different methodologies like 
permaculture, carbon farming. I immersed myself with a group of people who had dedicated their lives to regenerative practices and impact investing. I engaged deeply in local community, which ultimately led to a cooperative group that ranged from international permaculture consultants to local food foragers and organic growers. And that's how we begun, begun to tell a new story. So we set out the design plan of restoring living systems beyond the richness that was found prior to the quarry being established. And over the past two years, we have added thousands of tons of green waste and compost, countless loads of chicken, sheep, and horse manure, and we've planted over 13,000 trees and nitrogen-fixing plants. Our test zones that we have now include things such as aloe, banana, figs, arrowroot, plantain, lemongrass, watermelon, and turmeric, just to name a few. This is all in a sand quarry. I believe that projects such as this represent a new inheritance, a new economy emerging with core values around stewardship and not extraction, a new economy that recognizes the wealth of our oceans, our soils, our freshwater resources, all while building a more resilient community. Now, as Barbados celebrates 50 years of independence, and the quarry recognizes its 50th year in operation, it's time that we all looked at what we've inherited. Look at what Barbados has provided for all of us and how we can interact with the inheritance to ensure that the next 50 years, we can be proud of what we leave our next generations. Crafting a new fate of inheritance for Barbados and the future guardians of our heritage. So, I inherited a sand quarry, or did I inherit a nature reserve? Thank you. <laughs>